All right, guys, back with another film breakdown. Today we have Clemson and Georgia Tech transfer Tyson Fomachon. Fomachon was a four-star recruit coming out of high school, um, has since dropped off a little bit, um, but still definitely one of the most exciting transfers that UMass has probably ever had um, as a football program, and especially in the Don Brown era, probably the most exciting transfer that they got in the offseason. So let's get into the breakdown video. All right, so Tyson Fomachon, as I mentioned, a former four-star at Clemson. He came to he went to Clemson out of high school as a four-star recruit and kind of just got stuck behind a bunch of guys that were getting more playing time. Um, we, obviously, we don't know exactly why or why not he was not allowed to play in terms of Clemson. It was more just he had some really good players in front of him, whether it was Trevor Lawrence at the start or DJ after that. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name, but uh, you can look him up, number five for Clemson. But he transferred to Georgia Tech, still didn't get a lot of playing time, and then ended up transferring here to UMass. So definitely a very highly touted prospect. The first thing I wanted to focus on, though, was his elite athleticism he's about six foot three 220 very strong also one of the fastest guys on the field so you're gonna see that here he really just fits the UMass scheme very well they love to run these RPOs they love to run play action passes they love to run the ball and Fomachon kind of just fits into that very very well overall so here we go right here takes a snap looks over to the right to try to bait some of these guys up the middle to just take either just one little hesitation over to that way so he could beat them to the outside. He ends up doing that and takes this one for a first down. Obviously in the spring game, they're not going to tackle him, but nice job by Fomachon to show off that some, uh, some of that elite speed. Um, and you're going to see that again in this play here. This is with Clemson. He's going to, this is kind of a read option. I think he, Ends up pulling this back as this defensive end goes to whether he... Well, this defensive end is going to get this blocker, but um, Fomachon thinks he can get to the outside. He does, gets a little bit of a chip block help there. And at this point, it's basically just he's got to beat this guy to the edge. And this is Fred Davis the second, a former four-star recruit, now playing at UCF, but... Out of high school, he was projected to be a day two draft pick. So he's no bum. He can he can play football and he can run a little bit. So let's just see how this pans out. Right here, Fomachon beats him to the sideline, scores the touchdown, uh, showing off that elite speed. This clip shows off his running ability. It kind of fooled me at first. Uh, obviously, number 11, which is not what he ended up being for Clemson. He was number seven for most of his time there, but... Fomachon almost looks like a running back here with his ability to carry the football. So here, following his blockers, and then big jump cut right there, and kind of just completely fakes out this defender right here. Doesn't get a whole lot of yardage, but just showing a glimpse of that running ability and what that could mean um, with UMass and against some of those lesser opponents that UMass will play. This was a second and five. Um, nothing too special here, but sees that he doesn't really have anything quite open and sees that he has an open lane with number 16 kind of fully turning his hips and running this way. So he's just going to take the ball, run, pick up the first down, get out of bounds, pick up that uh, first down without getting hit, which is even more crucial, which is something I talked about in past breakdowns. But yeah, just a nice job by Fomachon. So this is a part about Fomachon's game that I really want to focus on because it it shows kind of the development stage that he's in compared to some of the other quarterbacks on this roster. He is, from what I've seen on film, a very smart player. I don't know anything about him as a person. I don't know. I haven't talked to him before. Um, I haven't talked to anyone about him as a person before, but just strictly from the film, I'm going to assume that he's a very smart guy. So Watch this play right here. He is going to look to his left, acting like he's going to throw, whether it's a screen pass or something. But his goal here is to try to fake out this linebacker 
to make him think that he's going to this side of the field because he wants the middle of the field to be open. So he's looking over there, linebacker following his eyes. He sees the linebacker following his eyes, and then he's going to pump fake, throw up the middle of the field. And look at this throw. This is going to be a slow motion play. Right into the hands of that receiver. Just a beautiful throw. Uh, that needed to be in a perfect spot to not only not get picked, but not get broken up, not just be wide, not be too strong. And it was just perfect. That is about as difficult throw as you're going to see. And he makes it with ease. We're going to see a replay here in full speed. Look at that. Pump fake. Boom on the money. Next play, Fomachon takes the snap. This is probably a play that you would run in a maybe a third and short type of situation where you just want to pick up a first down. Um, so if you look at Fomachon, he's looking over to this left side because... Maybe he's trying to go there. Maybe he's just trying to force uh, the the middle of the field to get a little bit open to pick up that first down. But he's looking over there and then doesn't see what he likes. So he's going to turn right back here, see this maybe a running back slot receiver settling down middle of the field, and he's going to throw him open. So not only does he just throw right to him, as you see here, he could try to just throw it right at his number right here, right at that three. But then this ball probably gets batted down. Uh, he probably just makes the catch and gets hit. Or um, maybe this linebacker can get to it. Probably not. But better to play it safe. So he throws him open. Allows him to pick up a couple extra yards. And maybe that's the difference between a first down and a fourth down. So nice, really just a nice play by Fomachon to make a simple throw turn into a nice play. So here we've got another simple throw turned into a great play. So... The first read that Fomachon is going to make is going to be at this middle linebacker. He's watching to see what he does. Um, so you have a kind of three receivers out wide here, then the running back as well, and then one guy out to the left. So he takes a snap, sees immediately linebacker is following this running back. He knows that he's going to have this middle of the field open with all these defenders around here. Next step is he's going to look keep looking towards the middle of the field, and he this throw is going to end up going to Manning right here, the tight end, number 85. So he's got to be a little bit patient, waits for this cornerback to clear Manning, because he knows that he's probably either going to throw to this guy here or this guy here. He's just got to wait to see what the cornerback does. Cornerback's indecisive. Manning clears him, and just a wide-open throw, and Manning can run for days here as he takes this one down all the way to the defensive side of the field. And here you're going to see a replay, Fomachon, as he's looking, kind of buying time with his legs, staying calm, and just making an easy throw to his guy. Here's another interesting play. So you see number 94 jumps right there, right at the top of the screen. They snap the ball. Fomachon knows immediately this is a free play. So he's going to look to his right. Doesn't see anything he likes. His 29 is blanketing that receiver. And then he's going to look back to the left side and sees Mark Pope with just a little tiny step of separation. But it's a free play, so he's just going to lob this one up. An absolute laser. And right at the hands of Pope, who's not able to bring it in. But what a throw this was by Fomachon. So you see here looking... Over there, doesn't like it. And then firing from around the 19-yard line all the way to about the 30, 37-yard line. So a pretty impressive throw by Fomachon, about 45 yards in the air and just perfectly placed, showing off that arm strength and that deep ball accuracy. Another part of Fomachon's game that I do think separates him from the rest of the quarterbacks on this team is is his ability to buy time in the pocket. His pocket movement is really, really impressive to watch. And that comes from, obviously, being a four-star recruit, working with the highest-level coaches at the Clemson level, um, and at, even at the Georgia Tech level, it is still ACC football. So here we see right here, this is at a Clemson practice. Clemson defense brings the pressure. He's going to immediately get out of there. Another defender coming up, so he steps up in the pocket, and from around the 30-yard line, firing a deep ball all the way 
to the 20 with ease right in stride for the receiver. That's a touchdown. And that's the type of throw that you're not going to see a lot of guys make at least consistently. And you see it a couple times in this highlight reel where he has the arm strength to get the ball down there with relative ease. And I think a little bit easier than what Haston was doing. This next throw here, he is going to fake the handoff and get to the outside quick. Beats everyone to that outside while he's on the run from around the 30-yard line. Makes this throw all the way to the 20, a little bit past the 25. A nice throw and a really nice catch by the receiver as well. But nice job by Fomachan to put that in a good place, allowing his receiver to make a tough play and bring that one in. Now this next play. We've got um, another play where he is feeling pressure, which is pretty much the theme of this segment, as you may have realized. But he's going to step up in the pocket. He has, or really not try to get out of the pocket as 54 is loose and this edge rusher is also coming loose. So he's going to run to his right. And while running to his right, make this jump throw. And one thing that I talked about Haston was that he keeps his eyes down the field even when he could run. This is absolutely situation. Fomachan could run, but he does not. He ends up throwing this ball and makes a very difficult throw. That receiver running the opposite direction, and he just hits him in stride. So we'll go go back to that play. This is the type of throw where it is very easy to either throw this ball well ahead of the receiver or throw it behind them as it's when you're running to your right and the other guy's running to his right, so kind of crisscrossing, it's a very difficult throw to make, and Fomachan makes it easily. Receiver doesn't have to do anything besides keep running besides keep running his route, hits him right in the numbers, and he's able to pick up some extra yardage. So for this play, he feels the defensive back coming around the side here steps up in the pocket but stays calm and just makes a nice and easy throw and man what a throw that is to his receiver in stride again and look at this play this is Fomachan knows exactly how much time he has he knows that he has a clean pocket to throw from just takes that step up and just a flick of the wrist gets this ball from the 35 to around the 35 yard line with ease Number seven has no chance of making this play, and 14 just has to stick his hands out. What a throw. Now for this one, this is a an interesting play as Fomachan kind of gets hit almost by his own offensive lineman, has a little bit of a jump throw that we saw Carlos Davis try to make a couple times in the first breakdown, but was a little bit unsuccessful. So Fomachan is a little bit taller, a little bit stronger, able to make this throw. Ends up putting it into a pretty tight window between, get has to get it over this guy's head um, and in between these guys closing in. He does so. Great throw by him. So I'll just show you this one one more time. Perfect throw right in there. And the final one of this segment, uh, once again, pocket not really closing on him, but he has this edge rusher closing in on him so he's just gonna step up keep moving his feet knows where he wants to go just has to wait for the route to break and then he throws this ball in a spot where only his receiver can go up and get it so i'll rewind here again play at full speed look at this right in the spot where only his receiver can get it he high points the ball nice play by that receiver um and just again Throws it high so the receiver can go up, make the play, and come down with it for what would probably be a first down. All right, so for this next part, these were just plays that I wanted to include in this breakdown that didn't quite fit into a segment. So here we have a play-action pass. He gets it out quickly and has to get it over the head of this leaping linebacker over this guy's head and before this safety. So he puts this in just a perfect spot. What a throw by Fomachan, avoiding everyone. And then this next, these next two throws, very similar deep balls um, along the sideline, tight coverage. This is a one of the best corners in the country, number one. I believe his last name is Kendrick. Um, and just a ridiculous throw to fit that into a tight window. We'll go back. Look at that. 
perfect. Perfect coverage. Nothing the corner can do about it. Nice catch by the receiver. And then again, almost an identical play. I don't think the receiver comes up with it here, but there it is. Um, and then with Georgia Tech, this is a nice throw that he made. There's a defensive back right here. It's third and four, as you can see. There's a defensive back that's being covered by the scoreboard, as well as the one that's guarding the receiver. So fomachan has got to make this into a tight window where if you throw it too far, it could get picked or your receiver could get absolutely lit up. Or if you throw it too far inside, again, it could get picked. The route could get jumped. So here we go. Makes this throw perfectly. Receiver picks up the first and some extra yardage. So as I mentioned, not a lot of game film of Tyson Fomachon as he didn't play a whole lot. But from what I could find, I did, I did want to find some critique. Because as of right now, all of this has just been like incredible. This guy is ridiculous. He's so good. And while I do really like his game, there are some things that he of course needs to work on, as does pretty much any collegiate quarterback. But... Um, this was from a game against Clemson, and this was an interesting play because I couldn't quite tell who he was targeting, but Fomachon has a tendency a little bit um, to just not have a lot on his throws that you want to go to the sideline um, to avoid getting picked off. So here we go. I'll just play it. So This one gets picked off by the corner right there, number six, as we're going to see a replay. I don't know if he meant to go to that receiver there. If so, it was overthrown. And if he was trying to go here, it was well underthrown. So corner's just able to jump the route, make that interception, and not a great throw by Fomachon. Next play here for Georgia Tech. This is a similar type of throw where you need to get this one to the sideline and he fails to. The cornerback jumps the pass, so there you see it. Just a nice interception by the defensive back as... You see the receiver will freeze frame it there. The receiver has no chance to make this play. It's kind of just the corner has to come in and receiver is almost playing corner at this point where he just doesn't want the corner to make the play. Um, but in reality, this ball has to be well outside the numbers. It's got to be probably right here at the very closest where you've got to put this ball in a spot where only a receiver can make the play. And when he's blanketed like this, you've really got to make this throw more towards the sideline because at the very worst on this play you want an incomplete pass um, but instead this ends up being an interception next play right here this is kind of just a rookie mistake by Fomachon um, so I'll just play this out first so he's running to his left kind of staring down his receiver and the defensive back net makes a nice play on it so I'll rewind here so it is going to be this guy this slot corner who's going to make the interception this is a zone defense so Fomachon sees that his receiver is just settling down here as the corner is dropping back in coverage but right away you see this corner who ends up making this play he turns his hips and just books it to the sideline he knows exactly where this play is going as Fomachon is staring down the receiver the whole way so he books it right there Fomachon doesn't get this ball out quick enough. Nice interception by the DB. All right, so this throw was from the spring game, and not a terrible throw. It's actually a completion, but just a little bit dangerous. So right here, this is 33 in coverage. I believe that's Gooden. He is going to hit Gibson and then pass him off to the safety as he is in, I believe, uh, kind of like a Tampa 2 type of play where he's just going to stay um, keep his eyes on the quarterback and stay pretty shallow. So he sees Fomachan's eyes are looking this way. He's going to try to break to this route, and just the slight hesitation causes him to not be able to get there and instead just lays the boom on Anthony Sibson. But if you look here, if Gooden is able to get a better read on this ball, see right here, if he just books it, this is going to be an interception. Uh, the the corner is not gonna be able is gonna be able to get to this ball pretty easily, and honestly, as this ball comes in, he probably could have gotten in hand on it. Instead, decided to just make a big hit. Receivers comes down with the ball, but again, you'd like to see this play. Um, you'd like to not see this ball be thrown at all, and at least throw this ball underneath to whether it's Zamar Wise or just throw it away and try to buy time. 
Next play, we've got Tyson Fomachon dropping back to pass. Um, and as you see here, watch his feet. I want to key in on his feet. He's just going to kind of like shuffle them. He's going to keep tapping them. Where, see right there. And then he ends up making this throw, kind of falling backwards, kind of like what we saw um, in a couple breakdowns. I think it was with Carlos Davis, where he's just falling away from the throw. And he does have the arm strength where this ball does get there, but George Johnson just not able to make the play as it's just a little bit too far away from him. But obviously, this is very nitpicky, but if he's able to really step into this throw, I think he's able to make a much stronger throw along the sideline so let's watch it again full speed tap throw and it's just a little bit wide this last one is an interception that i don't think is really fomachon's fault i don't think he could have done anything else so what he's reading here is he sees that he's got this receiver in one-on-one -on -one coverage or so he thinks and this safety is dropping down so he wants to throw this ball over the top where if he can clear this safety he could potentially have a touchdown or a big play to his receiver. So he's going to throw this ball. But as he throws it, he kind of gets hit by his own lineman as number 94 pushes the lineman into Fomachon, gets hit. A lot comes off this ball and a nice play by Dorian Helm to make the interception. So you can watch that one more time. Ends up just getting hit. Interception and... We'll see the instant replay, so right there. Kind of just gets hit on the throw, not able to get as much on it as he would have liked to, but I do like the overall idea. I only included this because I know that a lot of fans from UMass probably would have seen this play, but not the others, and just wanted to make sure I point out that this, although it looks like a bad interception, it, it really wasn't. He just got hit. So yeah, all in all, when it comes to Fomachon, I am really excited to see what he can do. I think that he should be starting game one of the season. Um, I, I talked very highly of Haston, but I do think Fomachon is just a little bit ahead of the pace when it comes um, to their game in general. Haston has not had any collegiate experience. You'd like to see him maybe even redshirt a year, um, gain some knowledge behind Fomachon, because I think that Haston can be kind of a Fomachon 2.0 with a little bit um, of development and stuff like that. So I think they're going to give Fomachon a, a chance to start right away. I think he is their most talented guy. Um, the combination of his arm strength, which I would say you put Fomachon here for arm strength, then I would put Haston a little bit below him, and then Davis is kind of more further down here. But Fomachon and Haston are much closer than I think anyone else. We'll get into Olsen uh, probably in a couple weeks' time. But yeah, that's the breakdown I have for Fomachon. Really excited for what he can be, what he can bring to this UMass team. A talent that I don't think we've seen UMass football have at quarterback, maybe in their history of FBS or at least in the last five years or so. So I'm really excited to see what Fomachon can bring. I think he could be their QB1 for the entire season, and I think he can make a lot of big plays and win some games for the Minutemen.